Hey y'all, welcome to Under the First Floor Lo-Fi Podcast, shitty recordings of bands you should like. My name's David Settle, and on today's episode we have Big Heat from Philadelphia, PA. This is actually my band, so I had to interview myself and my bandmates. We actually just ended up interviewing each other. Uh, it was a fun time. Got to know each other. Had some icebreakers. It was cool. This band was originally from Tallahassee, Florida, where I played with some really good friends of mine. A bunch of songs I had written after the breakup of my old band, X Breathers. Uh, but when I moved up to Philadelphia, I connected with a couple other friends and we started anew. And it's way more collaborative now. And we've written a whole record's worth of stuff. So we played a bunch of new stuff on this episode that hasn't been released yet. And just a reminder that I have started a Patreon for this podcast if you like what you hear and want to help support. It's at patreon.com slash under the first floor. Uh, there's a few different options on there. You can get some personalized mixes from me. You can make me cover any bad song you'd like to and I'll record for you. Uh, you can even get a mix of performances from the podcast uh, on a lathe cut record if that's what you're into. So go check that out. It would be very helpful if you donated anything. Uh, but if not, that's fine too. Just people listening to this is more than I could ever ask for. So thank you for that. And without further ado, here is Big Heat's first song called Out of Body. Hope you enjoy. <laughs> What's up with the name Big Heat? Dude, I don't know. It's your band. <laughs> you started this Why band. Why are you asking? Uh, I do, you know what that does? I do have a question for you, right? Because okay. you do all these interviews. Uh, what, I like we talked about why you kept the band name. Not with me. Ooh. That's true, okay, so one. Secrets. Why did you want to keep the band name? And two, what do you think about the band now versus what it originally was? Well, one, because I hate coming up with new names. And I kind of like that name. And I kind of just made a pact with myself that I was like, no matter what, I'm not coming up with a new name. <laughs> That's just going to be the name for any heavier punk shit I write. Yeah. Forever. <laughs> it's never going away. What was the second question? What do you... What? Oh, well, I mean, so it started like just more just what I was writing and then I had friends like backing me up but it was still like all of my songs and stuff and now it's like come up to be more collaborative I feel like and it's, I like it a lot better yeah just cause it's not all me <laughs> 100% I mean that's like, like a little less weight on my shoulder and like a little less like second guessing shit yeah I think this is the first band first band that's not when I was like a, a young kid where like it's the same thing where there's like multiple songwriters how do you feel about the way we go about writing songs? Like, I feel like it's more it's, collaborative, right? Yeah. I guess my songs, I kind of come full, but... But still it's more, more so, like, a, the framework for a song. True. Yeah. And, like, it evolves from that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't ever feel like we... Because I think I do the same thing where I come with a full... Like, one of our new songs, like, I had the whole structure... Mm-hmm. But, like, one, I think we all kind of come into it being, like, these songs are malleable. Like, yeah. they're not set in stone. Um, and I don't think any of us would be able to be in a band where it's just, like, unless it's, like, from the get-go, they're, like, hey, like, just tour with us. Like, yeah. play these parts, you know? It's more of a job in that yeah. sense, then. I think I, that's a big part of, like, not wanting to play the old songs. I know you always want to, like, <laughs> play a song from that yeah. record. Like, hey, I'm just, like 
kind of disappointed with how that came out and be like I don't want to have to teach anyone Ronnie or Josh's parts. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the one thing I don't want to do is play those parts. Because yeah, like, exactly. I, I can't yeah. learn them. time y'all ate a salad like yesterday yesterday oh. <laughs> it was sunday but i wanted one yesterday and i just bought ingredients for it today uh, okay. so tonight, tonight. what's the In, like, star player of your sa- favorite salad? oh i just oh favorite salad okay yeah. uh, avocado is always gonna kill it i think a roasted chickpea is my favorite like s- ingredient in a salad pickled onion pickled onion the combo. Yeah. It's really plain, but I really like a boiled egg on a salad. Oh, I, you know, I fucks with that. Hard or soft? Boiled. I guess hard oh. makes most sense because it's crumbly. Soft <laughs> I've actually boiled. never had a soft boiled egg, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't really do I've that. I've only had hard boiled eggs. Same. What's Wait, your opinion what on eggs soft, in general? Well, what is a soft boiled egg? <laughs> it's like the egg you get in a ramen bowl it has a oh, soft Oh, I have had that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, f- favorite type of egg? Yeah. Ooh. Over medium. Honestly, like, perfectly scrambled eggs. Like, fluffy scrambled eggs. Like, if there's any orange on it, you fucked up. Which is how I used to make them when I was a kid. And then I learned the real way. But I just recently learned how to poach an egg. Mm. And that's, like, the sickest. Do you put vinegar in it? In the poached egg? Yeah. Like, in the water? No. I'm just curious. I just do straight water. Huh? <laughs> no. Oh, I see what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you mean. Yeah. Well, it's egg whites, right? It's mayonnaise deconstructed. He, this interview is really <laughs> taking a plunge. Into Decon- it. It's funny that it's deconstructed because it's like you'd never construct to de. I'm gonna rescind my idea. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
I'm super proud of any of my friends who are able to like have any sort of career out of making the art that they like to make. Exactly. Yeah, like, that's nothing to poo poo well, on. That's a dream. Yeah. <laughs> I've never been able to fulfill. Yeah. It's also hard, like, having a work schedule and, like, needing to depend on that and, like, also trying to think about even touring again. Like, I feel like touring is such a privilege that people don't realize. 100%. Like, it's stressful to think mm-hmm. about. Because <laughs> yeah. I really want to, like, start touring again a lot. I, I think the way we were going to do it, like, doing weekends is going to be nice, but I don't know how I used to do it. I guess I was broke all the time. But. Yeah, and I think about that a lot, too, like, living in a house of people who are constantly touring and kind of hearing them with their struggles and these are like people in in successful bands or like what we would deem successful yeah and they're able to make a living off of you know they're paying their rent with it Mm. and that's nice and all and not all of them come from cushy backgrounds but like to assume that everyone can do that is really frustrating i could you know not have money and tour all the time and and go for the dream and and you know fucking do it like, that's great but like i also can't like i don't i don't feel that i can i feel know? like i tried that one time and now i have absolutely no savings <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, no like future plans and now i'm just like oh, i guess i'm stuck on this <laughs> such a shitty question i know that's i'll start just to get it out of the way i was in a shitty high school metalcore band in florida i was 2004 i was in a shitty high school 
noodly emo band. Okay. <laughs> Played the bass, not the drums. Oh, okay. yeah. Are we saying first band or like first music you were making? Because I wasn't in a. I made like three albums before I was in a band. I guess whatever that was. Or like what kind of music was it? We don't have to name bands. <laughs> I will not say the name. No, I'll I say band say the because the first, stuff, the first stuff was just like. Well, it just got deleted off MySpace, I guess. So. <laughs> no. no, they got it back. Oh fuck! I'm yeah. not saying it. No. Oh no, you know what? I wasn't. A... Oh, I forgot about that band. Uh, indie rock band. Like it was just like we were trying to be like a mix between like The Strokes and Broken Social Scene or something. Yeah, those those are out there somewhere. Yeah, same. <laughs> But we never recorded. We only recorded in our bedroom on a cassette. Oh, but like, so but like, not like a good cassette. It was like mm-hmm. straight up just someone's boombox, and oh, we hit record. Yeah. And it, oof, <laughs> oof. That's way tighter though. We oh. were like in garage, man, <laughs> really trying to make that happen. <laughs> oh, we were, yeah. We didn't have the knowledge of how to yeah. do that. Well, and it was like two thousand two, two thousand three. So like that technology still wasn't widespread. Yeah, I'm old. <laughs> Would you say that was your first like recorded material of your life? I guess so, but I didn't record that. The first thing I recorded was like my first band in college, which mm-hmm. is like like a post metal band. Yeah. <laughs> Instrumental. I dabbled in recording to cassette as a I wanna say eight year old mm-hmm. with one of those Playmobil oh, cassette yeah. things. Yeah. And I would just record birthday songs for my friends. <laughs> That's, That's amazing. Awesome. I yeah. wish I had that, like, I think up. I recorded over some of my dad's bootleg tapes. Damn. So there's, like, I remember there being one where I started singing, like, Happy Birthday to my friend Sarah, and then once that, once I, like, hit stop recording, it, like, went on to, like, a Rolling Stones song. <laughs> That's it. I think for me, like, because of my age and my parents' age, my parents grew up during vinyl. Mm-hmm. So they weren't doing anything with cassettes. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have that, like, handed down to me. And then when I was, like, starting to listen to music, cassettes had just died out and CDs started going. So it wasn't cool at all to, like, fuck with cassettes. In high school, I had this really sick cassette. It was uh, the car I learned how to drive on was like an 89 Volkswagen. <laughs> I thought that was the cassette. <laughs> oh, they had a cassette player. Okay. And my mom kept a couple, it was her car, she kept a couple like cassettes that she really liked in it. And one of them was the Beatles White Album. And because of the fallible nature of cassettes, it got extremely warped from oh, just like yeah. the heat of the car and like just be sitting there for like years. And I would listen to it and it got like really warbly and like sp- eerie sounding Mm -hmm. and i like the cassette then completely died so it was like such a brief moment of getting to listen to this like beautiful warped (laughs) beatles record (laughs) i definitely have a very early memory of my oldest one of my older brothers coming home with a mc hammer cassette for too legit to quit (laughs) oh fuck (laughs) that's like my earliest music buying memory speaking of that actually is was the first like thing of music you bought oh no (laughs) some 41's all killer no filler that's so sick fuck that's amazing offspring to smash oh wow it was actually gifted to me but i still chose it like my parents were like oh Oh, but you picked it yeah so yeah i I picked it i count that that's i was so stoked because there's so much cursing on it (laughs) (laughs) wow that's so oh wait first you answer the first first music you bought? In sync, no strings attached. Nice. I was so, so I got a I got a CD player. I was in Rhode Island at the time. Oh, never mind. Yeah, this was you when do. I was living in Rhode Island. Yeah, bought a CD. My my dad bought me that CD, but then I didn't have a CD player, so he bought me a CD player with it too. And I fucking played that thing out, watched the HBO special, learned all the dance moves. I just wanted to be a pop star so bad. I had a fake band. I'm really gonna tell the world this story. I want to tell this story. I want to. I need to really release it out into the world. I used to sit with my mom when I was like seven and I had made a made up boy band that I was in with all my friends but they were not fucking with it. But I was like, no, you're gonna be the JC of the group. You're gonna be the Justin. And I would sit with my mom and we would make flyers for makeup, like make make believe shows that were happening. That and the good. one flyer that we did you remember when you would like fold a sheet of paper and then cut it to like make it look like something? Mm-hmm. Like you'd do a heart or something? I did one that was like a bomb. And then like the show was like the bomb. Oh my god. And I was like so fucking hyped. 
I shouldn't have told anyone that. Do you still have it? <laughs> that, those flyers? Yeah. No, I don't. I wish I did, though. That was sick. We made, like, 50, which is That's tight. so dumb, because, like, I think I, like, thought I was going to hand them out at school, and then I got to school, and I was like, this is weird. Yeah. <laughs> But I was seven, so like whatever. But That's I so was, sick. You were making DIY flyers at seven. That's I was making yeah for a made up boy band. It was sick. so sick. When I was around that age, me and my friends made this big scrapbook together, and it started with just like we all had personal pages, but then towards the end we were getting really f weird, and we made this made up band, and each member was made from like collaging different body parts from magazines, so they looked terrifying. <laughs> And the band was called Dope Disco. Whoa, <laughs> that's a good name. That's and so we conducted sick. these interviews, and like, <laughs> I wish I still had access to this uh, like piece of literature. <laughs> I'll call it because the interviews were absolutely insane. Yeah. Oh, so you interviewed the made-up band? Yeah. We, well, because we each took on one of the roles, oh, okay. and so like, I interviewed as the drummer, which mm -hmm. I wish I could remember the name. We gave really ridiculous names to all of them. But yeah, the, the scrapbook's lost now, so oh. just... <laughs> my only thing like that from being really young and embarrassing is me and my best friend were, like, huge fans of Rage Against the Machine. Oh, hell yeah. And then, so we would just, like, play that record and try to, like, take pictures of each other, like, jumping in the air like Zach Taylor Roca. <laughs> like, <laughs> try to time the picture while we were in the air. Dude, I used to have... I first listened to Rage Against the Machine on a mix CD, but then just soon after I got a MIDI mini disc player. Do you remember those? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They were like smaller floppy discs. Yeah, yeah. And I would just mosh on our bus, oh, yeah. on our school bus all the time, just like by myself, like a fucking weirdo. And it was so, <laughs> like, I swear the bus driver thought I was like not okay. Yeah. I literally, honestly, like last week listened to that record again, like Evil Empire. Yeah. It's fucking good. It's I, so I, good. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. I haven't like, they were doing some fucking cool shit. <laughs> like... <laughs> My question is just in the past week, what has been like the song you keep going to? There uh, it's is not one. really a song, but just the Solange record. True. Mm -hmm. Like I've listened to that almost every day for the past like three weeks. What's your favorite song on that one? Uh, that's the thing. I don't. I listen to it all together. So. Yeah. I do too, but Stay Flow sticks out to me. See, I don't so even know much. which one that is. I don't know the song <laughs> titles. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> There's one. Uh, oh, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> These things I imagine <laughs> that. <laughs> Oh yeah, that one is sick. Yeah, there's yeah. that one. There's the two times song. She doesn't actually say two times, but like it sounds like that Fuji's like two mm. times. Oh, one two time. time. That oh, one. I know yeah. exactly what you're talking yeah. about. God, that song is so yeah. good. These things I imagine just that hook gets stuck in my like in my head all the time. I oh I played that album a lot, so I have to. Yeah. I played it like every day I've worked for the past. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's a great. That's work a great record. work. Yeah, that's a great album for a coffee shop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Call of My Friend by Aminaz. Yeah. And Sunday morning, those two songs, like I, that's one of the best couplet of songs I've heard in a long time. How about you, I've recently been revisiting Harvest Moon a lot. I think it's a good springtime record. <laughs>
What's y'all's favorite song to play of ours? Uh, I'd probably say Auto Body is probably yeah. the most fun for me to play just because it's like so just like it's like the gnarliest song mm-hmm. and it's just like quick and I don't know I could be having the shittiest day and we play that song and I'm like fine afterwards like that song really is like therapy for me I laugh the most when we play that song yeah because yeah. I'll get to that one point where you're, David's playing the lead and I have that another part that I think is really fun to play is that little part but the then floor the floor top part yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then I always do something stupid during like the drum fill I was like <laughs> <laughs> just laugh it off whoops which is so funny. That's really funny because I never, I'm like never looking at anyone during that song because we have it like so down at this point. But that's like the song where I definitely put on the most punk face of all the songs. <laughs> I like just, I'm like so like angrily faced. I'm just trying to look like the stock photos of women laughing with salads. <laughs> <laughs> there are like specific parts of a lot of songs, but yeah. I guess as a whole, tongue sounds is one of my favorites to play. You know, that's like quick. That's yeah. That's one of the most yeah. favorite songs for me to play. I every, like I don't particularly like, like love singing that song, <laughs> but I do like playing that one a lot. It's um, my least favorite one to play, but I do it's like difficult? it a lot. <laughs> yes, because <laughs> my hand cramps yeah. every time. So. Yeah. wondering i don't really like eggs like oh i already know i'm sorry i didn't even answer the question i'm sorry what do you like about eggs the taste and texture i like Like using eggs as a binder there's so many ingredients i don't eat an egg on its own though damn Hmm. they're kind of farty oh 100 yeah thanks so much to big heat and myself for playing in my basement uh, where we practice all the time it's a far trek for us if you like what you hear you can check out bigheat.bandcamp.com that's got some old recordings on there 
that we don't really play anymore. But if you like that, we have some cassettes of that that you can hit us up for. And the only social media we have is kind of Twitter at Big Heat Band, but it's really just me on Twitter, pretty much just following wrestling Twitter. So sometimes I'll post some band related things on there. Check that out. Um, if you'd like to follow Under the First Floor on social media, we're on Twitter at UTFF Podcast and on Instagram at Under the First Floor. You can email us at under the first floor at gmail.com. And again, we are on Patreon, patreon.com slash under the first floor. For the last couple of songs, we're going to leave you with some old lo fi cuts. The first one being from Zoomers called Walking. This is an old Baton Rouge band that originally self released a cassette in 1981. Uh, it was reissued on vinyl by Almost Ready Records. Some very interesting, weird, psychedelic lo-fi punk that kind of has some modern lovers influence a little bit too. Yeah, I don't know. It's some weird stuff, but I really like it. And then the last song is going to be by Aminaz called I Am Very Far. Steven had mentioned it earlier and talked about a couple songs, but I'm going to play this one because it's my favorite. Uh, it was originally released in 1973 on Zambia Music Parlor Limited and then reissued on vinyl in 2015 by Now Again Records. They're a band from Zambia. Uh, they were a Zam rock band. And if you don't know about Zam rock, that was a 1970s psych rock movement where Zambia had declared independence and the government had made it so that 95% of music on the radio had to be Zambian in origin. So a bunch of them were already influenced by uh, old psych and fuzzed out rock and started a bunch of really cool bands. There's some comps on now again called Welcome to Zam Rock Comps. And uh, there's a lot of really cool bands on there like uh, Muzio Tunya, Ngazi Family, and Witch. Aminaz themselves have a whole record out on now again. The whole thing's really incredible, super lo-fi, uh, kind of Velvet Underground influence. Uh, apparently the band name is an acronym that stands for Ask Me About Nice Artist in Zambia, which is really nice. Apparently they're big in the acronyms. That band, which actually stands for We Intend to Cause Havoc, which is like the most punk shit possible. I love it. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you again next week. Bye.
Let's be 